a conversation on how this legislative session fared in women's issues. Earlier this week, I sat down with Martha Burke, political psychologist, author, and host of the podcast Real Time with Martha Burke, to ask about abortion rights, rebate checks, and the failure of paid family leave. Martha Burke, thank you for being with us today. Cover some issues affecting women's issues here in New Mexico. We'll talk about some of those things. One of the biggest headlines is New Mexico's codified abortion rights. You've been on the show many times talking about this over the years. I'm curious, House Bill 7 passed. It was signed by the governor, of course, before the session ended, which was very in interesting to me. Did you feel it was going to pass that easily, looking back? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Uh, the governor has always been strongly pro-choice. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the Democrats have a good strong majority in both houses of mm -hmm. the legislature. So I was not surprised that yeah. it passed. Uh, I was a little surprised that there was not more overt protest at the roundhouse. Ah. Uh, by, by who? Well, mm -hmm. by the anti-abortion gotcha. folks. Yeah. Uh, maybe the bill snuck in, I don't know, but right. it seemed to get plenty of publicity. Is this a, would you consider this a major win for Governor Lujan Grisham? She's been talking about this for a while, but it's happened. Well, I think it is a win. Uh, how major we will see because right. what has happened, Gene, is they haven't really stopped the jurisdictions from putting these barriers up. They've slowed it down. Right. And so I don't know yet whether it will be a major win or whether it will be a barrier. The thing, the whole thing kind of opens it self up to litigation right. that could last for years. For example, mm -hmm. a person who is denied an abortion or gender affirming care could bring a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. Well, how likely is that to happen for an individual? Mm -hmm. And how long would that take to litigate? Probably years. Right. So it is a victory, but it's not a slam dunk. It's an interesting uh, situation when you think about what House Bill 7 does, which is obviously empowers the state, state AG or a local DA, the right to initiate a civil lawsuit in district court. Uh, it, it, it's very hard to predict the future, as you just mentioned, but I'm curious how you see local DAs approaching this. It's been dropped in their lap for some you know, places, a Roosevelt County, Eunice, other places that have passed these ordinances. How does a DA manage this? This is a very well, difficult position. I think it's interesting because the way it's worded, it allows the DAs to do it, it does not compel. Gotcha. Gotcha. And so many of them, or several of them, may decide based on local politics or their own proclivities that they're just not going to touch it. Mm -hmm. And that, again, Gene, puts it back down to the victims of this restrictive legislation of, that the counties and some cities are trying to pass or have passed. Right. And so it's going to be interesting to yeah. see, but I don't see the DAs jumping into this with both feet. Mm -hmm. How about um, our, our, our Attorney General? I mean, again, it's hard to predict, but these are political issues. And depending on if it's a campaign season or not, do you see what I mean? There's, there's all kinds of ways this could kind of flow back and forth. Not to ask a prediction, but can you see it in a situation where a DA would wander into, I'm sorry, your Attorney General would wander into a, uh, you know, a DA's just district who does not want to do this? Yeah, yeah. I, th I can see that, and okay. again, it's going to be a push of me, pull of me. Right. Uh, the DA is going to be conflicted, maybe not on personal views, but mm -hmm. just on how far should they go. We already know that abortion is legal in the state of New Mexico, mm -hmm. and what these counties and cities have done is they haven't prohibited abortion. Right. That what they've done is make it so hard for a clinic to come in that the clinic's going to say, we don't need this. Right. We've got plenty of other problems without having to get into years of litigation with a city or county. Mm -hmm. So it's effectively limiting access to abortion without doing so directly. Right. We'll see how that plays out. Like you say, it's going to be very interesting. Uh, another, uh, for families, another important issue was, of course, uh, the wide-ranging tax package that did pass through the legislature included uh, $500 tax rebate payments for individuals and 1,000 payments for couples. It's less than the 750 that the governor wanted, but I'm curious how you feel this is impactful on, we have so many households here headed by women. Absolutely. So many as a percentage. Is $500 a, a, a game changer for them or is it? For some people it will be, okay. Gene. Mm -hmm. For some people it's groceries for a month. Right. You know, gasoline to get to work. So yes, it will. And you're very correct mm -hmm. because 
most low wage workers are women. Right. And the lowest low wage women are women of color, which right. as we know in this state means mostly Hispanic and indigenous women mm -hmm. who are so far behind on pay equity. Indigenous women have to wait until November of this year mm -hmm. to reach the earnings that white men made by the end of last year. Wow. Now that is a shameful statistic. Right. But so yeah, $500 maybe to some of us that are a little more fortunate is not a game changer, right. but it could be for a single mom with a couple of kids trying to keep them in school, right. make sure they have decent clothing to wear and so forth. I appreciate that, absolutely. $500 is a lot of money, a lot of households here for sure. Um, what, we, what didn't pass, what was interesting was the uh, paid family leave bill. And that could have been a, a game changer, I'll use the, the word for families certainly. Was there too big a bite trying to be taken here or is this something we can sneak up on perhaps in legislators, uh, legislatures of the future? Well, I think, it, I think it's both. Okay. I think it's both. It seemed draconian to the businesses that did not want it. We only have in, in the whole United States 11 states that have paid family leave. Mm -hmm. Now it has been shown, although this is apparently not convincing to employers, mm -hmm. that it does foster more loyalty to the company, right. the, the workers are more satisfied and not uh, don't tend to leave and go for another job and that sort of thing. Right. They say they can't afford it. Well, Gene, we, we hear this argument all the time, businesses have a right to make a profit. Mm -hmm. That isn't true. Mm -hmm. They have a right to try to make a profit. If they had an absolute right to make a profit, we could just go back to slavery. Right. Right. So yeah. there has to be some push and pull. I think it was good that the bill came up. Mm -hmm. I think it will be back, of course. Most of the states that have it now, it took several years. I bet. And people yeah. have to get used to the idea, oh gee, could we really have that? Right. I mean, 12 weeks is a big, bitter pill for a lot of employers. 12 weeks is big, and that might be something that has to be bargained down. Right, right. Uh, Because if you started with, say, four weeks, that would still be huge to most of the workers in this state. Mm -hmm. And I think 12 weeks was a big bite, and that probably uh, was a big factor in the extreme opposition. Was there something to be gleaned from the amount of opposition that coalesced very quickly on this bill and was very loud? I mean, we know the lobby system, but business really did come together. Does this speak to the nature of the fight in the future? Absolutely, it does, because businesses, I mean, let's face it, I'm not anti-business. Sure. I know you're not either. Mm -hmm. And COVID has taken a big, bite out of not only profits, but right. just the ability to stay in business. Mm -hmm. So I do understand why when they hear 12 weeks, they think that's a fourth of the year. Right. And we can't afford that, and I think they're correct. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the other hand, the families who do give their time, blood, sweat, and tears, so forth, to right. the companies, do deserve some consideration. So there's gotta be a middle ground. Mm -hmm. I think that will come back. It'll come back with a lesser period of time, may take two or three sessions, sure. but eventually it'll happen. Mm -hmm. Another issue, uh, final issue, that's developed into a woman's issue, if I might be so bold, is the governor's appointee for Secretary of Indian Affairs. We talked about it on the show a few weeks ago. Um, James Mountain's daughter wrote an op-ed defending her dad and asking for his support for the position. And of course, uh, the governor is uh, keeping him on. He is now in the position, just not confirmed. And we'll see what happens. I'm curious if you want to pull back the lens a little bit in this whole thing. I'm curious your take on it. We've got the letter from the daughter, but the initial shock of the governor's announcement of this appointment was just heard around the state. I've never really seen anything like it. I'm curious what you made of that. I was puzzled as heck yeah. about it. Uh, I don't see the utility of it for the governor. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it makes her look bad. It makes it look like a patronage deal, right. uh, especially when the opposition surfaced. As far as the daughter will find, we all love our dads. We try to show our dad and mom's best sides to the world. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't blame the daughter for writing the letter. 
Uh, I do have an issue with the governor mm -hmm. for sticking, well, for doing it in the first place. Mm -hmm. There was no reason to do this controversial appointment or near appointment right. in the first place. Right. Why do that? It, as uh, it was said on our last discussion of this, the optics are terrible. Right. What was the reason? We don't know. The indigenous community is up in arms about it, appropriately so. Mm -hmm. He can serve now without being confirmed. That's right. The next opportunity is January 2024. Wow. So that is more than half the year. Mm -hmm. He's going to serve under a, what I might call a public indictment right. uh, for what he has done but not been convicted of. And that's the other thing, yeah. Gene. Yeah. People are trying to equate um, lack of sufficient evidence with exoneration. Right. It is not the same thing. Right. There is still a cloud over the sky. The indigenous women's community particularly has asked that a indigenous woman right. be appointed to this uh, position and I think they're on to something right. there. Reminding the folks he's in the position paying $169,000 a year as a matter of fact and he's unconfirmed. It's actually an interesting scenario. Um, the process, um, I, I gotta go back to this process of not having that Senate vote. Should the governor perhaps have anticipated that the legislature was not just not gonna touch it as soon as it came out? And what would have been her better move uh, in your view as opposed to letting him just kind of, kind of drift through the process, so to speak? Well, her better move would have been not to do it in the first place. Yeah. That shows either lack of diligence or a loyalty issue that we are unaware of, Jean. Mm -hmm. And I think the governor needs to answer for that. Mm -hmm. She's been pretty much radio silence right. uh, since this. She's just letting it ride. Uh, did she know that it, he would not be confirmed? Did she right. know that he could serve anyway? The big salary is an issue to me. Right. Uh, is there a personal indebtedness here of some kind? Who right. knows? Right. Uh, or is it merely not paying close enough attention. And then once you make a move like that, feeling the need to defend it, even if it's with silence, yeah. which is what's happening right now.